Hello everyone, Ember here, and welcome to the latest video. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at six new Brilliant Star Aurora Box deck lists from Japan. And just a quick note, all of these feature Arceus, so if you're not intending on doing anything related to Arceus, then um, yeah, now might be a time to head out. But I will say this, I do think a lot of these are really cool decks, so even if you're maybe not the biggest fan of Arceus, if you're like a fan of Aurora Box style decks, then you might find these interesting. So without further ado, we'll just get into it. And just a quick note on the contents of the series. Originally I had this as like one long video, but it was blurry unfortunately towards the end. So I decided against it and instead split it up into four different videos. So we'll go through Aurora Box, Arceus Partners, one prize budget decks, and then decks with buffs. So like Shadow Rider gaining Whimsicott and stuff like that with the, the buffs ones. So yeah, big fan of Arceus. Has a lot of versatility in the format. Of course, not everything will be an Arceus deck, don't worry. But just for the Aurora Box and Ar Arceus Partners will obviously feature Arceus predominantly. So going into the first list we have here is um, a pretty box standard Aurora Box deck list. Like I, I looked around quite a bit and out of the many lists I sift through, this one seemed to be like the most consistent, funny enough. Like some of the other ones are pretty cool, but I do think this one is like the most consistent. So playing a 3-3 Arceus line, one Hooper, one Moltres, one Zapdos, and then a 2-2 line of Weezing. This just allows you to cover all your options, really. It covers a lot of weakness, especially with Hooper and Zapdos. So, you know, decks like Eternatus, which could give you some grief because they can want to kill you, or opposing Arceus decks even. You know, you can um, disrupt them quite a lot with cards like Hooper and Zapdos, so it just makes sense. Glare and Weezing as well is very prominent because... It's just great against Mew Genesect and other Inteleon based builds, which are also super popular, of course. So, yeah, makes sense to include Weezing. One Crobat, one Luminion V is pretty interesting as well. I don't know if you really need to run both, but this person obviously thought it was necessary. One Ditto V, which is pretty interesting because it's just going to allow you to swap into a Hooper or a Moltres if you need it ever. I'm guessing it's more here for like Moltres and Zapdos as opposed to Hooper, just because Hooper is harder to charge up. But, um, yeah, interesting to see nonetheless. Two Switch, one Escape Rope, four Quick Ball, four of the new Ultra Ball, two Evolution Incense, two Energy Switch, two Choice Belt. If you don't know what Choice Belt does, it allows you to do additional 30 damage to your opponent's Pokemon V and V Star, which will also include V Max. One Air Balloon, one Tool Scrapper, four Research, two Marnie, and two Piers, one Right Hand, and three Boss. So, oh yeah, and three Training Core. So, with um, the Train Account, this deck isn't like running masses of supporters because it kind of relies on the consistency of star birth the ability to find you know luminion v ability to find crobat again i think that that makes the deep the deck like very the deep the deck very susceptible to path to the peak so i would be concerned about that as well as you know opposing glaring wheezing so just bear that in mind when building this kind of deck you know maybe you want to include um for example pumpkaboo from i think it's evolving skies and uh, there is a lot of um deck lists that are sieved through did play a lot of pumpkaboo as we'll see in the next one so i would recommend that just in case you know you need to have a way of bumping your opponent's path to the peak and just getting access to your ability so you can find more draw supporters or you know just add another draw supporter but um either way interesting to note Three training court just gonna allow you to get back basic energy that you need because you only play seven basic energy, which are six dark, one fighting. So more of an emphasis on the dark type attackers just because Mew is so dominant. And then one powerful colorless just to allow Arceus to do that bit much more damage because double turbo is of course reducing your damage output by 20. And then two double turbo itself, obviously. You don't tend to see high counts of double turbo in these builds because Arceus obviously isn't your main attacker. It's primarily there for the the ability but it, you can use the first attack and certainly the first attack on Arcus v is also really good so it just kind of makes sense to play a limited copy plus you can find it really easy with star birth the uh, ability I should say so moving on to the next list i'm in two minds about this list on the one hand i kind of like it more than the previous one on the other hand i'm kind of like torn the main reason why i'm torn with this list is not because of the energy which is which is i think a little bit more streamlined actually what I am against is the one Crobat VMAX. I don't know why this person is playing Crobat VMAX. I don't really see terrible merit in the card. Yes, it's another anti mune It can switch into one of your Weezings, which is kind of funky. But um, other, than, other than that, I don't think it's worth it, especially not a three-prizer with 
300 HP, which is a number that a lot of cards can reach surprisingly well, including Zabba's V. So, yeah, I would worry about Crobat V Max too much, but um, One Pump Kaboo is inspired. This person has also put, like, more of an emphasis on what they already ran. So there's no Ditto, there's no um, Hooper, there's just two Moltres, two Zapdos, I kind of like that. 3-3 three, three Weezing seems a bit excessive, but it's kind of what this deck needs to run, I guess. One Pumpkaboo, and then two Corobat, one Luminion. Pumpkaboo, obviously there because I think the opponent's wanting to get rid of Path to the Peak, and also because Galarian Mine and Weezing can be a devastating combo to allow you more time to set up. And then one training court, obviously getting back the basic energy that you need for a specific attacker. So that's it for the trainers, really. Three energy switch is pretty bonk standard in this kind of build. Um, two choice spelt again. Two capes of toughness this time, so no air balloon. I'm not sure I agree with um, the capes of toughness, but if it's giving your um, basic guys more health, then I guess, I guess it's good. And that's a 2-2 two -two line of Glaceon. And a... Uh, and 3-3 three, three Arceus, 1 Zapdos, 1 Shadow Rider V, 1 Luminion, 1 Crobat, 1 Eldegoss. 1 Shadow Rider is probably here for the um the Mad Party matchup, I should say. Whereas um Zapdos is for opposing Arceus and Gengar decks, I would have presume. And then the Glaceon is kind of just like an afterthought, like I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why Glaceon especially. Doing 150 for three, walling out V Maxes. It's interesting, but like, I'm not sure why this person thought Glaceon in particular. But as you can see, a lot of strange one offs in this deck. I'm not sure how to feel about this particular build. Like, the energy count is very much out there. Plus, you're playing like a bunch of single prize Pokemon, like Dunsparce, Pumpkaboo. Pumpkaboo makes sense. And a is probably there for Mew. But um, I think at that point, I'd rather just run like Moltres. So, interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. Hunger Prime, Prime Wisdom, maybe? Hmm. I'm not sure. Hmm. Yeah. It's strange. Hmm, sorry, I was lost in a train of thought there. Um, yeah, so basically, why is this list not playing Moltres over some of the other attackers? I, I don't know, to be honest. But um, Shadow Rider V, I think, is there for um, the Mad Party matchup. But I don't think, I mentioned that already, but I don't think um, Mad Party is going to be too prevalent in the meta. So you could probably swap that out for something else. But it is interesting to see, and it can be powered up quite easily, thanks to Double Turbo. So interesting build. But um, yeah, why Glaceon? My Glaceon, interesting. The Glaceon does need a double turbo and a water, so maybe there's some synergy there. Interesting though. So moving on to a more um rapid strike based build, for those of you who kind of like like Urshifu and Arceus, this plays this runs um a three three Arceus lines we've seen before, and then a two two Urshi. So Urshi being pretty good, not just because it's a good spread attacker naturally, even with Manaphy around, is it's just a one hit kill on an Arceus for a single fighting energy, that's obviously really good. And then it's also playing two Moltres to deal with Mew, which is really smart. One Hooper to cover even more weakness. One Ditto to transform into anything you would need. And then one Zamazenta V. Can't decide if that's the new Zamazenta V, like the, the latest one. I think it might be, just because the new Zamazenta V actually has like a double colors in its attack cost. And then we also see one Elder Ghost, one Luminion V full art, I think that is in the middle. And then one Crobat V. So, interesting support Pokemon selection again. One Pumpkaboo, I do like again. One Zigzagoon is interesting. I wonder where Zigzagoon ever helps in the math, but maybe it does. And then two Training Court, two Choice Belt, four Quick Ball, four Ultra Ball, three Escape Rope, two Energy Switch, one Air Balloon, one Big Charm. Pretty standard supporter line, but then we do see some a bit more variation with the supporters. I think it's three Research and then two Full Art Marnie potentially. Next to Avery, I'm not sure if that's Marnie or not. Um, someone will have to correct me if I'm wrong. Two bosses order, one flat Raihan, five basic dark energy. I think that is yeah, five basic dark energy, one metal, three fighting, two double turbo, one rapid strike. So interesting split trainers and energy. Um, not sure how to feel about this one. I do like the whole 
Urshifu package with Moltres. I think that's good. But I'm not sure, like, is it ever going to be worth it to play Arceus over Inteleon? Probably not, but um, it is kind of a, got a cool ability, so... Yeah, it could be interesting. So a slightly different build to the last one. I promise this is actually a, a different list, don't worry. This one doesn't have the Hooper and doesn't have a Zamazenta or anything fancy like that. It just has the straight Oshi Moltres Ditto package, so a bit more straightforward. It's also running another copy of Double Turbo and slightly more fighting energy and a different stadium, the one that limits bench size. And considering you're playing Pukamuku, you could obviously like bump your own Pukamuku, I think, with that stadium, so it's interesting to see. Again, is Urshi Moltres like destined to become this Urshi Moltres Arceus archetype? Potentially, potentially not. You know, um, if I was building Urshi Moltres and I had Arceus lying around, I would build this version of it. But I do think it's pretty cool. But yeah, Arceus, Urshi Moltres. Interesting deck for sure, but like, again, I don't know if this is going to be like the future of the deck. But I do think this is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty good. The one Ivalto in there, just even more anti Mew stuff, which does, which yes, does make sense. Two Moltres, two Luminion V. I'm not sure why you need two of them. I guess if one's prized and you really think you need the other one. In fairness, you're only playing five supporters, not including two right hand three boss, technically. So, yeah, yeah, I can see why it's important. One Crobat V, and then one Ditto V, as we said before, just allowing you to switch into something for more versatility. And then lastly, a bit of a more experimental version. But this is like honestly such a cool list to have to include it. I don't know if this is by any means competitive. I don't think it will be. But it's such a cool box deck. I mean, it's playing Arceus and then goodness knows what else. I think it's easier to almost start with like the support Pokemon. One Crobat, one Dominion, one Eldegoss. So as we've seen like the split counts, people trying to work out, you know, what's the best combination of the support Pokemon. Two Mew from Celebrations to find items, which is interesting. You are playing three different basic energy, not including special energy, so being able to find energy search and energy switch is probably quite important. It also can find you choice spell and air balloon, so maybe it's pretty good. I don't know. I feel like Mew Celebrations is underused a lot in the West, so maybe it's actually really good and we don't know about it. But either way, two two Arceus, two Moltres for the Mew, obviously, one Zapdos for the Gengars we talked about before. One Vicavolt is pretty inspired. I'm not sure why Vicavolt is here, except for the item lock. I mean, it must be worth it, but um, yeah, interesting. One Ditto to allow you to, to just swap into Zapdos or Moltres or um, another Arceus if you need to use Arceus V's first attack to charge up some stuff. I probably should like mention that in the other videos, the other deck list, sorry. But um, yeah, this list isn't actually playing a Weezing package. Funnily enough, it's playing um, one Hooper. It's kind of like your one prize attacker and two Moltres as even more anti Mew. Not playing any Clara and only six Dark Energy is a bit sketch though. I'm not sure how much I like that. But I guess if I'm combining with Training Core, it's kind of like there when you need it, sort of thing. And you are playing Energy Search at least. So yeah, interesting lists all around. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, let me know down below which is your favorite list. I'm personally more inclined to play something like um, probably this list, actually, because it's more interesting, although I'd swap the Tadda Stadium out for a Gallimine or something like that. But yeah, Urshi Moltres Arceus looks pretty good. Something to take away from these decks, I think, is the the Weezing and the Pumpkaboo. I think it's interesting, Weezing especially. You know, it's, it seems to be worth it. But yeah, hopefully this is giving you inspiration for your own Aurora Box kind of deck. And um, yeah, thank you for watching.